Oh my god, it's hilarious. I'm with Creepy. You like that? You just told me how much you don't really care about Halloween. It's funny, though. I don't understand you. <laughs> yeah, good. best of luck trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Can we get? <laughs> Can we welcome start? everybody? Oh. to another episode of Thank You for Your Services podcast, the podcast dedicated to the working world, Ooh, um, close service one. industry, whatever Tom does, and me because I'm in the military. This is a podcast for everybody out there who works, especially those of us in the service industry who work really hard and go unappreciated. This is for you guys. That was I almost, fucking lame. I almost said yeah. That was fucking. And I had to watch myself. See, you can't put a box around me, Tom. I am unboxable. I don't just come in a neatly formed package, yeah. vacuum sealed. Have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? I'm like silly putty. Okay, I'm always busting out the sides, even when you buy it. So is that why, <laughs> when I <laughs> when I mush you into a newspaper, I can I can read it when I pick you up? Okay, first of all, I know that you've never bought a newspaper. Secondly, <laughs> that wasn't funny. Who pays for a newspaper? That's <laughs> when just you can just silly. steal them you out just, of the. <laughs> you can just take it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just take it out. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. This is thank you for your services podcast. In case you didn't know, in case you weren't listening forty five seconds ago, my name is Matt, and across from me is my co host. Tom, also known as Tommy, also known as Tommy Two Streets. To some. That might be a really lame intro to some of you. Some of you might be saying, I don't who's care. this big-nosed freak? <laughs> and I, I would say that's Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we introduce uh, each, each other as like the opposite. For real. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't that's, get it. That's Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, for those of you listening, maybe a little bit later, um, cause this won't come out until after Halloween, technically. Boo. Uh, oh, it's, that wasn't even a joke. Literally, I was booing it because I wish it did. That's anyway. why I'm not laughing. <laughs> Secondly, uh, this is our spooky episode. This is the weekend. This is before Halloween. This is right before Halloween. Uh, they don't have to know exactly when it is. Okay. Well, it's right before Halloween. Um, if you're a new listener, Halloween is a very big deal in my household. I build a haunted house every year that the whole neighborhood comes out to and uh, other neighborhoods that are expanded beyond ours. The local area. They come out to. And I'm hoping to get around 300 kids this year and, well, I guess, and adults coming through. Uh, Tom over here is helping me this year. Finally, he he helped back in 2016 and he's going to help again this year. Very, very excited. You sound like it. I fucking am, dude. <laughs> I've barely slept all week. I've been really stressed out about what the weather and what's going to get done in oh, excuse me, what's going to get done in time. Work has been extremely he's t- stressful. He's turning into a frog. Yeah. No, the weather the, the weather sorry. earlier this week fucking sucked really bad and that made me like not looking forward to Halloween even more cuz I was worried it was going to rain again. Yeah, I mean, I really hope that it typically does rain on Halloween around here. It does every every year. It rains a little bit, and then by the time trick or treating starts, it kind of stops. I really, really hope it just clears up. the The weather is all saying now that the storm is moving past, and we're not going to get any rain until the day after. I don't know. You know, you never know until the day of. You know, it's really what oh. Do you need to take that? No. No. Oh. You know what's really wild? It rains every year on my birthday. Hmm. Every year it has rained on my birthday since the day I was born. I mean, hmm. I guess you could say that about anywhere. It's probably raining somewhere right now. It's always raining It's somewhere. always raining somewhere. And it can't rain all the time. It's true. You know what that's from? The crow? The crow. Exactly. I thought so. I, was, I wasn't confident in my answer, but I thought I knew that. So when you were a kid, did you ever... I, I like to think of like sometimes I I stay up late at night and I think of these like weird interactions I had as a kid, and like I remember this one time, this kid who, who lived next door to me, 
I didn't want to hang out with him. I was hanging out with like my other friends. Your and, real friends. Well, no, they like well, kinda, but they also lived like down the street. There's like these these two girls. I know the hierarchy of how right. it was when we were friends with right. just the people in our yeah. neighborhood. And then you get real friends, and then you're like, and then li- then life starts. I can't mix my guys, you know. So, uh, I just remember like this kid. He was kind of like being a little annoying. He was a little younger than us too. I think he was like maybe one or two years younger than us. And he was, you know, still in that, like, really annoying phase. And we were, like, nine, I want to say, me and these two girls. And I, I don't know why I always I, – this, this this just, like, randomly got brought up in my mind. But I remember, like, I didn't want to hang out with him anymore. And I told my mom, and she goes uh, – and my mom's very cold. Like, she doesn't care. Like, she doesn't think, like, oh, that might hurt that kid's feelings. Mine, too. <laughs> yeah. My mom is uh, 100% from Germany, first-generation German immigrant. She is not the warmest person. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. She's 100% from Germany. Oh. So She's she... an American citizen. Right, right, She was right. born here, but she is ger- str- German. That is it. Honestly, dude, I think I've only spoken to her in the past 20 years, like, twice. Right. And that was, like, it was, like, a few words. I never... Sounds like an interaction with my mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wait, you've met my mom. A couple times. Yeah, a couple times. Maybe twice. Yeah. Maybe twice. Well, she... So, I just remember telling her, like, hey, like... I don't want to hang out with, with this this kid anymore, you know. And she was like, "Okay, <laughs> tell him you're not allowed to have more than two people over." And I was Same. like, "And I was like, oh, that's perfect." Seems innocuous enough too. So I told this kid, "Hey, so and so, I can't have more than two people over." And he got so sad. And he was like, "Okay." That's how it was when we were younger, though. I know. Like, the, our whole world was like if someone's mom was going to say yes, if we could come over and spend the night or something, or like if we could go do something, our whole world was that yes or no. No, that's that's very true. I just, but he, they also lived next door. So it was like, so then his mom came up to me. She knocked on the door. I remember I had to like, or no, no, no. I'm sorry. She came up to me on the sidewalk and I was like, Oh, I'm scared, dude. She, she confronted yeah, you? Yeah, she confronted me and was like, you know, that's really not okay. Oh, my that's, God. That's, that made so-and-so upset, Um, I and I don't think that's fair, and you really hurt his feelings. And I was like, and it actually really hit me. I was like, Ugh. she's she is right. You push over. No, because it is. It's like it's like you. I played with the kid next door whenever I didn't have any other friends to play with. I know, but it, you know, it's the, the hierarchy day. of the neighborhood, <laughs> lady. Sometimes you're that next door neighbor and sometimes you're not, you know? Hey, I, I've never been, I, luckily I've never been that next door neighbor. I've never, I've never been this, the safety friend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? But I don't, I don't think so. Hang oh, out with in case of have. emergencies. Oh, I bet you have. I've been this. I, I bet been, I haven't. I, I know I my have. friend group. I bet I have been at some point. I I, I'd honestly say I know I haven't because all of, all of my friends in my friend group, like we were always like dying to hang out with each other for the most part. Like one of my friends got into World of Warcraft. Oh yeah, you'll lose them. We fucking lost them. Yeah, dude. dude we sure did. We, we oh, like full man. on would lose them sometimes. There was a girl at my school in high school and I was buddies with her like all, th- you know, middle school, like in high school. We got into the 10th grade. And her mom had passed away. And she was really into World of Warcraft. Well, after that, after her mom passed, she stopped showing up to school. And she only played World of Warcraft. Well. And she had this, like, addiction to it. A, that's a very addictive game. Yeah. B, you can't really expect a child to understand that kind of loss or grief. And C, what the fuck are you going to do? Well, that's the thing. I remember talking with her. About because I she finally came back like after like a year or something like she and then I was and she I think she had to repeat a grade I think that's what it was she didn't graduate with us or something so um she was telling me like she had to lock up her computer in a closet and like throw away the key because she was so addicted to it and then she ended up like tearing her closet down. I just listened to a podcast yesterday with a guy on there who was also into World of, World of Warcraft, and yeah. he 
told his parents at one point, do not renew my subscription. I am in this too much. He said wow. that he said that lasted a month and then the, the next month he renewed it and was right back. Damn, dude. I remember my my ex, uh, you know, you know her. Um, she was she got in a World of Warcraft and I remember this whole summer. Oh. Um we didn't do anything or like go anywhere or she just all she wanted to do was play World of Warcraft and I had to like beg her just to go ride bikes or go do you know we were like 16 17 no i guess we were like 17 yeah 18 i was 18 she was Mm. like 16 yeah anyway very exciting it was not (laughs) that's the summer i gained a bunch of weight because all i was doing was fucking in i was just hanging out at her house and i was working a whole bunch and eating fucking wheat thins all the time and then I had to like work wheat thins, wheat thins, and I had to work it all off the next that like whole year it took me like a bunch to get my normal in shape back. So if all you were doing was working, why would you go over there anyway? Because I would like sleep over their house why? all the time because I wanted to see her. That was but just how we did. Her family became my family yeah. because, and my dad and I were kind of on the outs, and okay. I was like sleeping there or like doing, you know, whatever. Makes sense. I just ate a bunch of wheat thins, bro. I got so <laughs> into wheat thins. <laughs> oh, this so, guy. To this day, I don't buy wheat thins because I'm scared I'll just keep eating them. <laughs> just keep eating them and eating them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Today at work, let me tell you. So. What's on your mind, baby? I'm about to tell you. Um, a couple of things. This week has been very stressful because I, they put me on like my first like big job that I had to do. I had to test these things that um, are fire extinguishers inside of helicopters. So not like the fire extinguishers you can pick up and spray. They're built-in fire extinguisher systems. So if the bird crashes, these things are activated and all this chemical will spray out and put out a fire. You understand that the company I work at is a fire suppression like company. Yes. That's what we do. Okay, so you I get understand. It. You get it. But I didn't want to say fire, you know, I said fire extinguisher. Other the the listeners might not know what I'm talking about. It's so. not an Ansel system, but it's not a uh, is it a foam system or no? Uh yes. Yeah, is it like, gas? It's okay. like foam, yeah. So um there are things do you know what a squib is? I know what squid billies are. I, I think no, a I, squib with I know a B. What, I know what a squib kick is. What's a squib kick? It's like an onside kick, but it goes a little further. It's for delaying the time in a football game. Anyway, what is your squib? Jesus. Yeah, I have no idea what that. A squib is a tiny explosive. So they use them in movies when they're doing like somebody gets shot with a gun. Oh, like, and like yeah. the, like a bullet pow, pack. Pow, they call them pow, bullet pow. packs too. Right. It's that they're really called squibs. Okay. That's really what they're called. So helicopters have squibs for all different things so they have squibs to um for a lot of like emergency situations so like there's when we do like a hoist there's like um you know a rope that comes down or like a hook stuff like that you've seen people like get hoisted up well say the load is too heavy and the bird's about to go down a squib will explode and it'll it'll shoot this blade across the rope and, and it'll cut, cut the, the line. Rope. Yes, exactly. Makes sense. So squibs, so squibs are used for that. Well, in this case, squibs are used to explode inside of these containers and they shoot all the, they make sure the, um, the, the agent, the fire extinguishing mm-hmm. agent is dispersed through these big tubes. Mm-hmm. So when you, so we had to replace those. We had, not the not the squibs, but the 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 bottle that contains the agent inside of it. It's called something I don't remember what it is. It's a, anyway. We just call it a fire bottle. Mm-hmm. So um, we're replacing this, and this is like it's kind of up to me to do this because I'm the own like I'm I know wiring and stuff like that in my in my job. So uh, I you know working on this or whatever with another guy, and uh, he's an amazing mechanic way smarter than me whatever but he he accidentally touched metal leads for electricity we were testing to the squib oh shit and i almost fucking shit my pants yesterday because it, it'll explode yeah and fucking we'd get in a whole lot of trouble so that happened yesterday but it didn't didn't explode so we were really lucky 
Uh, a couple of things happened. Today. Oh, and then today, at the end of the day, I'm doing my toolbox inventory. It's a big no-no in the world of aviation to be missing a tool. Sure. Because that means it it's be. on an aircraft and it could... It'll fuck up the weight and stuff. Well, it'll fly around. It could kill somebody. We call that FOD, falling object for, debris, yeah. or for an object debris. Yep. I always do that. Um, and basically this was a punch i was missing out of my toolbox which a punch is that for like punching a hole or something no punch is like a metal a piece of like metal that's like tapered at the bottom and you use it you'll you'll hammer stuff with oh, it yes like yes. a punch like it punches out things right and there's i have a we have like 30 of them and they're all different sizes well i was missing my smallest one hmm. and i was like oh fuck because i didn't even use those all week like i haven't even touched them that's even so weirder. that means somebody went into my toolbox and took it out it. and never put it back so i uh, and this is the end of the day everybody wants to go home and we have to do a walk to make sure there's no fod in the area and mm-hmm. we have to do all this shit and we have to have a meeting at the end of the fucking week and so uh i'm freaking out everyone's helping me look for it and i'm like oh fuck and i I know everybody's thinking in their head like this motherfucker at the end of the day on a fucking friday yeah exactly and so shit my buddy ends up remembering he used it and and forgot to put it back yeah wow all of a sudden (laughs) yeah so he uh so he he remembered after like i don't know 10 15 minutes of everybody looking for it and uh convenient but what happened was he used it yesterday which means I inventoried that toolbox two, Incorrectly. two other times with another person with me, and all of us missed it. Wow. Which is nuts. That just goes to show you. I mean, if if that really is the case, if he used it yesterday and never put it back until this moment, that moment today, then that goes to show you how much being tired at the end of a day can really affect your work or, or just distract you. Because we show up to work at 6 a.m., and it's a long day. It's a 10 and a half hour day. And, n- you know, not that that's like the craziest work schedule of all time, but cl- I've been climbing up and down helicopters all week, like like more than usual. I've been climbing up and down. My knees are fucking killing me. My back hurts. We're mm-hmm. all been doing it. We I had a very busy week for my aircraft because my aircraft has had a lot of problems. Like the aircraft that was assigned to me, we got it from Alaska and it was sitting outside in Alaska for like a couple of years. So it has mm. issues because Alaska is a terrible place for a helicopter <laughs> or really anything for your car. For you ever been there? I never have. I'd love to go. Me either. Don't want to go. Really? I really want to mm. go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's been a stressful week. Um, but it, it made me really think about, you know, being complacent at work in general, especially when you work on things that can kill people if you don't fucking do something right luckily all my work was done correctly but that tool i can't believe i missed that a couple times i'm a very diligent person about my things Mm -hmm. obviously (laughs) like i have a lot of things and i know all of them and where they are like if you for the listeners like my house is kind of like a little mini museum to all my like collectibles and i have quite a bit of them um I mean, everywhere you go in the house has either toys in it or on it or some form of collectibles. And I also have like 1,200 DVDs. And and on top of that, I have VHSs and I have a record have collection. Records, I have a CD CDs. collection, cassette tapes. We have books out the fucking wazoo. We you have, have comic books too? Oh, yeah. I have a whole... How about graphic novels? I do have graphic novels. I have a whole section for them. Of course you do. I know. You know where you know where all my toys are at? That display case? No. Up in the upstairs? I mean, I know the display yeah, yeah, case. Yeah, the yeah. display case. Underneath there, there's those those uh, doors that open up. That's where all my comics and gotcha. are and stuff, yeah. So, anyway. I couldn't believe I missed it. That just goes to show you. Just being a little bit fucking tired. They at call the end of that day, fatigue. It is fatigue, yeah. I was very tired. My uh, my knees are hurting. The, the, the haunt, I've been working on the haunt. I couldn't get anything done last weekend. On my four-day weekend, um... 
I got I got everything done. I could get done on Friday. I am now officially out of room in my house to be working on things. So now I have to wait until tomorrow where we start putting everything together. So I built everything in sections. Now we put it all together. And it'll all go outside and it's going to be awesome. And it's just going to sit outside put together? Pretty much. Yeah, not everything. Uh, some stuff I'm not putting up till Halloween day. So, but tomorrow we start building the walls and the uh like the structures like the big church and uh the mausoleum well not i don't think many listeners know exactly what they mean by your haunt what do you mean why don't you describe it oh well i i mean i guess i got into a little bit um this you're not you're also not going to spoil anything because nobody can come all right nobody that's listening this is halloween is monday this is thursday we're talking that's true yeah okay so the haunt this year is a um, a pirate graveyard themed haunted house. So I've always wanted to d- incorporate pirates into my haunted house. I love pirates. Like I even I even write stories about pirates in my free time whenever I can. Mm, I, I did I ever send you the short, <laughs> the no. short story I wrote while I was on deployment? I don't, oh, they, I don't remember. I made an audio version of it and it got played on a podcast. It's pretty mm. cool. Yeah, and then they interviewed me about it. And That's sick. Stories that I write. Yeah. I didn't really, know that. It was a cool interview, yeah. And then I got I ended up getting COVID, and I had COVID during the interview, and I was like... Damn, I, I hope it was you over didn't FaceTime. give it to No, it was over... Uh, I'm sorry. Was it FaceTime or Zoom? One of those. And... Uh, hope yeah. you didn't give it to them through the Zoom. No. No. Scary. It's, it's scary. Um, also, do you ever go back to work and visit people? Fuck! no okay me neither okay who does that the only thing i did was recently i was going to lowe's and i brought my old co-workers donuts and then i left immediately after bro wait my- wait 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 you mean like at a job you used to work at yeah uh, uh, it's always weird to me like i don't want to go back on purpose i never make a trip to go do it right i never do either people at my job who worked there before all the fucking time they come back How's everybody doing? It's like, dude, you, at the barbershop? No, 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 no. This is at my place of work now. Guys who are out of the military oh, now and stuff like, uh, and then they're they're not technicians anymore or whatever. And they like they want to talk and all this shit. They want to bullshit. And I'm like, well, dude, people I like have, to bullshit. I know, but I've so I could never. If I'm retired, I have, I I could never be like. Well, let me go see what my old coworkers are up to during work hours. Well, that's because you don't understand boredom. You don't have a relationship with boredom. I don't. I don't get bored. So there I'm you go. I'm very busy all the time. I think you believe that you are busy. What? Why do you not think that I'm busy? Well, the definition, like the the way you define busy, is just like your time is taken up. Hmm. Um. That's not into, that. When I think busy, okay, I think of like obligated. Okay. I don't know. It's just. Do you mean if I didn't have my hobbies? That's that's a better way of saying it. Hobbies doesn't really entail, or that doesn't really uh, come across. That doesn't mean busy to me when you're when you're not not you, but like the like when you people. Like, when someone is, like, fiddling with their hobbies, that's not busy to me. You can always stop. You can always stop a hobby. I guess I would say I'm, I keep myself busy enough where I don't get bored ever. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also busy doing, like, chores and stuff. Like. That never ends as a homeowner. Well, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that that all that shit is completely understandable. Yeah, Res- all- resident black cat Haku is stopping it. Aw, hey, hey buddy. buddy. Yeah, I hope he comes up. Anyway, sorry. He probably will. No, that's it. I mean, it's been a uh, it's been a heck of a couple weeks. I'm very tired right now. When we get done this podcast, I'm probably gonna pass out. Mm-hmm. I remember when you said that earlier. I actually <laughs> yeah. believe you. Yeah, I'm very tired. Me and Tom cut each other's hair tonight. It's Before true. getting on the podcast, it was very nice. It was very, very nice. Um, I my second my haircut. haircut that I've ever done. No, oh. actually, my third. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, I've been help. I've been training you a little bit. You know, we'll get you better and better sure. each time. <laughs> that's that's what practice does, right? That's what I've heard. Yeah. All right. So, what's on your mind? 
Oh, I got I got so much. I, I'm I've been so looking forward to recording because like <laughs> we've we've been lucky enough to have two weeks in a row of like really awesome guests. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's nice. Like I love coming back to like a nice regular episode sometimes. And I've got so much. I've got funny plates. Okay. I have uh-huh. one silly sticker. Uh this sticker it says uh watch out for the idiot behind me. And I was like <laughs> I was like, "Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> That's me. I'm the idiot behind me." <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's funny. Uh the plates, the plates. Fuck, where's the folder? Fuck. Okay. Baby Bat. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is one that I is saw. Is it a goth chick? Gotta be. It has to be. Black the, car, pur- okay. purple shit around purple it. Purple around it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That girl definitely has an OnlyFans. All could right. also be a guy. It's not. It also could be a they. Trapper. Trapper? Hardly Literally know her. Trapper. <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> he's on. He's eating up. <laughs> oh, I was behind a celebrity. Who's the celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> the rock oh my god dude literally so, says the rock i never saw any of the jumanji movies besides the robin williams one the original one yeah the, yeah. yeah the original one and so we work on helicopters for a living there's a scene have you seen any of the jumanji movies with the rock in them it's funny i saw what was it it was either the second one I think I saw the second one and the third one, but not the first one. <laughs> Are there three? If there's not three, it was just... No, it was the second one. I saw the second one, not the first one. So I'm guessing this was the second one. My buddy just showed me a clip today where in flight, in a helicopter, that one of the Jonas Brothers is flying. He was literally actually flying? He's flying the helicopter in the movie. It's He's not... Like, no. that, was, that was him That's doing the, the stunt? He... No, the, it's it's not a real helicopter. It's a So then he a, wasn't flying, was he? The scene. Okay, he's so he's flying a helicopter. In the scene he's flying the helicopter. Jesus, Tommy. <laughs> what? I thought you were actually about to be like, yeah, he actually flew for the stunt. Uh, may, well, I mean, maybe. doubtful if there's, no, no, no. If there's I mean, a professional shot. You can tell shot. everything was CGI and shit, but well, what I'm saying is he might fly a helicopter. A lot of rich people get they, they get their licenses. But anyway, um during flight the rock oh i feel a yawn coming on I'm trying to stop it uh, don't do that <laughs> uh, stop uh, so anyway so the in flight the rock is fixing something that connects to the propellers sort of like the fucking blades <laughs> it, it, you would die you can't do something like that in flight. And it was just, it was silly. That's Hollywood. I know. I'm picturing Hollywood, it in my head. Maybe. I can't explain it good, but it's a thing that you just couldn't do in real life. Something that's physically not possible. Right. But it's funny that The Rock is like, yeah, I could do that. Like in a, in a movie, make sure I do this thing. That's absurd. Do you think that was really up to him? Oh yeah. He's the highest paid actor in the world. Is that true? That is true. Google that shit. I'll wait. Jamie, pull it up, please. <laughs> I don't know uh, anybody named Jamie. He's he's our producer. Young Jamie. Young Jamie Vernon. Oh, my God. Isn't that jo- uh, Joe yes, Rogan? Yes, that's the joke, silly. That's <laughs> that's why it's not funny. All right. Go on. More plates. So that, oh, that license plate, by the way, for the listeners, says The Rock. They'll see that in the video. I know, but. I also said it. Earlier. For the listeners. That's why I just said it. Oh, I saw. Right in, uh, right around the time they announced uh, that they're getting back together fully. Oh, a Blink One Eighty Two license plate. Jeez. I know the yawn. Move your mouth. For what? The microphone in front of you. From what? <laughs> oh, Christ on a cracker. Moments I live for. Blink One Eighty Two. B L N K One Eight Two. Oh was... no, no I. No, there's not enough room. B L N K one eight two literally. So you can only put seven, seven mm-hmm. letters in Delaware. Seven characters. In some states, you can do eight. Because I want to do Halloween, but I wanted to do H A L O W N. Halo W E N. No W N. So that's only six. You could, yeah, you could do H A L L W. No. Halloween. 
Can I do a pumpkin emoji? I don't think you can do emojis <laughs> on license plates Why yet. Why not? Uh, can we make, on everything else. Can we make that a thing? Uh, like our generation, can we make, since we're going to be taking over the DMV, can you, we do emojis now? You know what I heard one time? What? Speaking of emojis, that since they're technically not like a, like it's not a written language, it's just an image, it's emojis are kind of a universal language that anyone oh, can use most certainly. to certainly. I was just about to say with. they are a language because we all understand them. Right, because it's an image. Yeah. Imagine well, that. Language does change itself every 25 years or so. Like people just take on different lingo, their accents change. Do you really ever hear a fucking New York accent anymore? Like that yes. old New York accent? Really? Oh yeah. You think so? Whenever I, I go to New York, I, I hear never it with hear my it ears. Anymore. Yeah. I never hear it anymore when I go to New York. When's the last time you were in New York again? July. And you were where? In New York City. Where? New York, New York. Oh my fucking God. What did you go there for? Manhattan. I was there to see Broadway. Yeah. But I mean, I've hung out in Brooklyn and all that shit. And it was like, I didn't even really hear it then. There aren't like Manhattan and especially Brooklyn, especially now is not full of true New Yorkers anymore. Those people are transplants and they didn't grow up with that accent. Everyone in New York is a transplant. A lot of them. Yeah. But there are New Yorkers. I know. But I'm just... I just don't really hear the accent anymore. Well, you don't live in New York either, so that's probably why. But like, okay, you you know my dad, and he has that the New he Jersey. Still accent. has that New Jersey, New York. Well, where did he horror. grow up? He grew up in North Jersey and New York. Thank yeah, you. New York City. That's my. But point. what I'm saying is, I'll meet people now that are from there, like that in the barber shop. I would meet them, and I'm like, boy, you don't even sound like you're from New York. Mm, it's wild. I don't know. I do know. A lot of them are moving to Delaware now. A lot of New Yorkers are moving to Delaware. I ain't buying it. Well, you don't have to. I ain't selling. Well, there's plenty, plenty of actual of actual New Yorkers that have the classic New York accent. Plus, there's different dialects of it too. Like the Bronx people from the Bronx sound different than people from, like people who were actually from Brooklyn from like way back in the day, like older people. It, it's it's language, man. It changes. That's, like you said. That's what I'm saying. I just agreed with you. Help. But you didn't for so long. What? Because the accent is going away. It's not. I think it is. I don't... Well... I think most accents are going away in the U.S. Uh, People are picking up a different one. Look at how fucking Billie Eilish talks now. She I, sounds crazy. I couldn't tell you what she sounds like. Oh, she sounds stupid. Well, gun to my head, I wouldn't know what she or sounds like. she used like, to. So. She started to just fucking... Good for her. Normal. That's great. <laughs> Those were, uh, um, have you ever been in like a public restroom and you see like those creepy, like religious pamphlets in the restroom? Mm -hmm. No. So I I, do see those though. Oh, they get posted on my door a lot. Well, those are like, you know, obviously door to door people. They're not technically missionaries. What are those people are? What do you call those people? Just door to door pamphlet hander outers. I guess. Yeah, missionaries. Well, anyway, pa- I was... Pa- uh, parishioners. Par- well, those are people who go to a church. Well, eh, regardless, yeah. I was in a restroom in an Acme that was open late, and I think this is why. Like, an, uh, And I've seen in other restrooms, like a public restroom that is available at like late hours of the night, a private place, if someone's like either addicted to drugs or like not in a good way. Yeah. They can find themselves in public restrooms, either seeking refuge or temporary shelter or a place to shoot up or something. So I've noticed now sometimes there will be like religious pamphlets. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't pick it up because it's in a public restroom, but I see it and I can imagine that inside it'll, it'll tell you to like go to church or do something to try and get your shit together. Okay. You never saw those before? No. Crazy. There was one in the Acme, um, like right up the road. Not the close one by the Walmart, but the other one. The Up Kirkwood Highway. Yeah, by Comic Mania? That is ShopRite, so no. Yes, 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 yes. By Comic Mania, Acme. yes. I'm thinking of the used other Comic Mania. used to be a path mark. Yeah. Now I was thinking of the other Comic Mania, my bad. There's not another Comic Mania. There was two. No, no, no. 
There, the there original, was not two. It, it moved. Right. The original location. That's why it was I, by Movies 10. Yeah. The, yes. So um, that. It yeah. wasn't ever two of them, though. Very fun. <laughs> uh, I love Comic Man. We were just in there. Last week. Yeah. Uh, one of my coworkers at 7.20 in the morning. Okay. Queued up uh, Here Comes the Sun. By I the Be- fucking hate that song. By the Beatles. With a passion. Played it over the intercom, the whole office. Cool, cool. Not cool. I know. That was not, it's not, it's not okay. It's not cool. It's 7.20 in the morning. Yeah. And you can probably hear that song once a day just being out in the real world somewhere anyway. Yeah. Nobody needs that at 7.20 in the morning. You would hate my job. They have that giant boom box. That well, I'm sorry. Boom box? No, it's like 720 will come around. They play fucking... Oh, it's like the same shit every day. They start the morning out, same time. about Because about, that's when we really start working is around like 7, 720. After the meetings and After stuff. After the meetings. They fucking just start blasting music. So and they're all hopped up on caffeine and energy drinks all day long because they can't just have no caffeine to function. And I'm not a, obviously you and I have talked about we're not caffeine drinkers or anything. Don't say we. I am. You drink caffeine a lot, plenty. Yeah. Where do you, where are you getting your caffeine? Well, I drink a Red Bull. Oh, I didn't know that. See, and I've never somet- had. A- Sometimes I drink soda. You know. Oh, I've I've never even had an energy drink. Well, I, I've, I'll drink a soda, but it'll take me like a week to finish it. Okay, remember that soda I got at the movies when we saw Smile? I remember that. It's still in my car, unfinished. Ew. Yeah. Gotta, well, that that's was, just garbage. Well, my car is away. a fucking mess right now because it's filled with haunt stuff because I can't fit the rest of it in my house. Well, I also remember you had a, a, a bottle of Coke in that fridge, and I saw you drinking from it, and I was shocked. When was that? That was probably it must have been two weeks ago. That was definitely not two weeks ago because it wasn't. It wasn't last week. It was before oh, last. week. You know what? It was that same bottle. Oh, you bought a bottle from the movie theater. Yeah, you can I buy it you in a bottle. A, I thought you bought a, a like a soft drink bottle. looking thing. No, it came in a Coca Cola bottle. Why'd you buy a bottle and not a fountain drink? You don't know. That's what they have there. I got a fountain drink. Oh no! I just I was just like, can I just get a bottle of Coke? Because they have it right there in the fridge. It's easier. I like if it. You say so. I like it in the glass bottles. I like Coca Cola in a glass bottle. It's yeah. nice. It's better. Is it better? I don't know, but people always say that. It's <laughs> then like why they, say it? It's like because it's silly. It's such a stupid thing to say. It's like it's like when people you are just like, said it though. It's like when people are like, "Oh, my son just started driving," and you're like, "Oh, I'll stay off the sidewalks," and then everyone fucking loses Ugh. their goddamn minds laughing. Their heads explode. Because of how fucking funny that joke is. This sounds made up. It's not made up. All right. You never heard that? No. Oh, you're out of your mind. Maybe I just don't listen to these people. <laughs> Maybe you just forgot. I didn't. I didn't forget. All right. What's next? I was uh, <laughs> speaking of speaking of cars. I was driving, and uh, I think like you know you've probably heard people talk about how. If someone's driving aggressively, they'll purposely drive slow. Uh, I, yeah, I do that. So, or I used to, not anymore. I wouldn't bother anymore. I'd yeah. rather just be rid of them. Yeah. But like, I saw like the most vindictive slow driver, <laughs> like of all time. Cool, cool. I was, uh, I was coming, I was coming down forty one because I needed to go north on ninety five or something. Yeah. And. There's a strip. It's only one lane on either side, and there's a huge hill. And then at the bottom of the hill, it finally turns into two lanes and splits. But there was this car. I think it's 50 on that road. And there was a line of cars that was all, like, it was so long. There must have been 10 cars, including myself. And this person was going, like, 35 <laughs> purposely down down the entire hill like up Damn. at the top of the hill all the way down to the bottom around the turn and i was like man either that person is half asleep or they are getting back at that truck behind them and i'm, <laughs> I'm thinking the latter that's silly that's funny and it was like like 
everybody did the same thing immediately got in the right lane and got like around, around them, them yeah. as quickly as possible but i was just like man i envy i either envy that person's confidence or their like lack of care about the world around it's them it's pretty great and m- ignorance must be bliss sometimes yeah when, when people used to ride my ass or really be assholes i'd just start brake checking them that's what i used to do all the oh time. i i still brake check people if they tailgate me but ever since i got in a fucking fight with the one dude when i was on my motorcycle and he was in a mm-hmm. car i remember that story yeah and i was like you know what dude everyone's out of their fucking minds in this country dude imagine that interaction now the way people have I mean, been that, crazy that was now. five years ago so yeah. yeah imagine now yeah it was funny uh liz and i were watching a episode of family guy and eating our our dinner before you came over and the episode was peter hanging out with vladimir putin <laughs> and i go holy fuck like this did not age well like dude family guy predicted everything oh the simpsons predicted everything. i mean yeah the simpsons yeah i know i bet the simpsons have an episode just like it probably yeah simpsons is great love Mm -hmm. the simpsons i need to do a a deep dive on uh the simpsons oh do you want to plug your other podcast i guess so yeah um several several few episodes ago by now let's see yeah about well anyway uh, many episodes ago at this point uh we did a we did an episode with my buddy Dennis and Dennis and I do like a comedy podcast. So if you enjoy silly, like literally just silly banter, uh, that podcast is called irrelevant and illiterate. And we, is it available everywhere? It is also available everywhere. YouTube, TikTok, uh, the podcast streamers and all that good stuff. And, uh, let's see. I R R and I L L on Instagram. And, um, uh, each week, the one, the one thing that we do that I, I enjoy is like, we'll assign each other something funny and some kind of music to absorb. And then the following week we'll talk about it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Other than that, we just goof off and it's just, it's just for, just for laughs, irrelevant and illiterate. What episode are you guys on now? It's like five, I think. Uh, Yes. Let me think. Yes, five just came out yesterday. Okay, cool. Yeah, excellent. Anyway, it's it's a fun time. I just wanted to i I wanted you I wanted to bring that up before either of us forgot. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. thank you for that because we haven't talked about it at all yet. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I gotta remind him. Yeah, to now say it on this podcast. Yeah, now we're five episodes deep. So. Yeah, that's cool. And our audience is not that same audience, so. That's a really good crossover. Thank you for considering that. No problem. You got it. Um, lately, uh, because the, you've noticed how much fucking construction there's been always. Oh, yeah. Well, Delaware's just famous for that. Well, Philly, too. Especially, especially right now, they've been uh, paving a lot of 95 up there. Yeah. But, like, after, after, like, 476 and going into the city of Philly. Yeah. And lately... If there's a lane closed up ahead, I've noticed a lot of people will get over from that lane that's closed mad early. And I'm like, man, this is a great trend. Yeah. I've, I've just, I've started picking it up and everybody seems to be on the same page. It'll say like lane closed one mile up and everyone's getting over. I'm like, this is what you should do because all the time there's like 10% of people who wait until they get up to the sign or the cones to start trying to get over. And that's what traffic, that's where traffic comes that's from. That's what starts traffic. Yeah. That's, exactly. that's the impetus of all traffic is people doing yes. stupid shit like that. Hell yeah. You can always trace traffic back to someone dumb. That's what I think. <laughs> Dude, speaking. What the hell was that? Did you hear that? I sure did. Moving, it was uh, it was the creeper from Jeepers Creepers. That fucking was he terrifying. just he just parked outside. That was really scary. So speaking of traffic, didn't you say you saw a bad accident on the way here? I did. It was it was at least three cars. It was real Holy fucked up. Shit. Dude. Yep. I was shocked too because Kirkwood Highway. Kirkwood Highway's not big, no, and you I don't know. go that fast either. You shouldn't go that fast. But that right there, or uh, almost that, right there, that's where that other accident happened that I talked about like a couple months ago. I thought you said that was over by the McDonald's. 
No. Oh, never mind. No, it was pretty close oh. to right there. Makes People sense. People speed when they come off of that 141 ramp and they just yeah. zoom down. They don't realize. By the way, and th- this has been a weird night because I was telling you, my next door, yeah, I don't neighbors. know what's going on. They were like, I, I heard knocking and I wasn't sure if it was our door or the door next door because we're townhouse, so it could sound, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, there were like five, six cops in like their full fucking battle rattle. When Matt told me this story earlier, he did this thing that he's doing right now. He dropped his register a little bit and he's whispering as if not to alarm the police that are somehow hey, look, hear him talking about I, it. My voice carries, okay? And they're always listening. They're not. They might be. Well, if I hope they're subscribed and they like the channel then and give us a five-star rating if they, if they are really listening. So you ever hear, okay, in the military... There happen to be a lot of people who think they know things about conspiracies. Like, yeah, you don't say. Exactly, exactly. Um, and I, I don't ever want this to be into a, and turn into a conspiracy podcast because I fucking hate conspiracies. But there is a fucking guy at my unit. I don't know if I told this story yet, but he, he's, he's not a guy I work with on a daily basis. He's at my unit. He said that he thinks, now this is probably just him being a contrarian, but he seemed to be adamant that he thinks that mass shooters are Our crisis actors, are no, plants okay. by the leftists who want to take away gun rights. And I just went, oh. no, they're not. <laughs> no they aren't that, they, and i i said that's probably the dumbest thing i've ever heard i think that's up there yeah that's that's top four yeah that i've heard in my I, lifetime but but I, what i was thinking about that today and a lot of people who have never had anything terrible or traumatic happen to them that's who build these conspiracies up in their head because they it, it's the it's that it's that human thing in us where until it happens to us, we don't register it as having any real meaning. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just thought that you think that was interesting. It is interesting because after going through a lot of trauma myself, you sure have. I've been able to, I can let all kinds of shit go. Not, almost nothing bothers me anymore. So I don't, I don't think I, I feel that thing that those people have. Like, like they're trying to either justify or they're doing th- those, those, those people like that guy you just talked about yeah. are doing gymnastics to try to explain things that they don't understand. Right. And they don't have the knowledge to support either. Right. So they go, Oh, it's a conspiracy. It ha- oh, pyra- it has to be pyramids are aliens. I, I, it has to that be. fucking There's- drives me up a wall. That pyramids were built by aliens. No, there's no way they could just be the like greatest marvel of right, all construction exactly. of like, all time. Like, oh no, hu- humans discovered fucking everything at like. <sighs> Do you ever just sit back and think about how incredible it is that humans figured out antibiotics? Not just antibiotics, but like, but just anything, but anything. but just, but what I mean is, antibiotics have saved so many lives, right? I think about that when I use the computer. Yeah, all the time, yeah. Like somebody was smart enough to figure out code and all yeah. of these things and there's like bedillions of bedillions of gigabytes of data that have been created and deleted and just it's all it all stems back to literally zeros and ones and just yeah. a bunch of fucking code yeah, that dude. make images on your screen, videos, audio like this very podcast. Dude, I know, like I'm a fucking idiot. Because I am a full blown dumbass yeah, moron. That's what I mean. Like I would never in a million years. But we're also creatives, right? It's it's insane. Like guys at my work because they're technicians, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, like this this gear and this gear and like that's how they work." And and of course there could be something wrong with this planetary gear. They're mechanical, and dude. And they just get it. Like it just makes sense to them. And me, I'm like. Where's the wizard that turns on the flying machine? Because I'm a fucking idiot, dude. Where's the dragon inside of this thing with wings? Because I'm a creative. You could say, hey, Matt, write a song about 
uh, fucking, we used to do like these funny like exercises mm-hmm. in the car when we drive to a gig, and we'd be like, na- write a song about fucking blue broccoli go and then like i would have to make up a song about blue broccoli or or so on so forth about duct tape and i could just do that i'm a good story i can write a story i can describe characters and make up backstory you know that creative type shit i can make fucking art you know i can sculpt if somebody told me in the in the fucking if i was alive in the 1930s and somebody's like hey um so there's a language that only electrical machines can understand and i also know how to speak i'd be like get out of here bozo <laughs> get out of here bozo i don't need your devil crap with me that is how you would talk back yeah. then well what's funny do you know about do you know what that's called that accent it's like classic radio broadcasting voice isn't it so, so it's called the mid-atlantic accent it was an accent created by hollywood because nobody heard each other from other parts of the country speak really before so hollywood kind of created this and you know there were silent pictures and then of course came radio and you know it it all sort of started coming up together and everyone's like well we need to sound proper when we speak and we all and it just sort of became not only okay so it became you know, we need to sound proper when we speak. So everybody started kind of sounding like they're from New England. Who knows where? New England, in a, in a sense. Sort of. Where, you know. I always thought it sounded kind of Midwestern y too. Well, I mean, think about it. Everything started in the New England area with the colonies, and then everyone expanded out west. You know what else I think of too when uh, people speak that way, back, huh. or spoke that way rather, is I think it was kind of intentional in the way I would that they would want it to be easy to comprehend, like easy for people to hear what they're saying. And that that's another reason. Enunciation, if you will. It also came from uh, magnetic tape being... Magnetic tape is reliable, but it, it fluctuates sometimes. So sometimes you'll hear something on an old... Because I listen to a lot of old-time radio broadcasts. Sometimes you can tell it's sped up a little bit or it's, you know, or it's slowed down, but typically it's sped up. And eventually it's just one of those things where you hear it enough you start imitating it because people do that all the time Mm. look how much hip-hop became part of our culture and now whenever you look like some kid from the suburbs who like loves hip-hop he starts talking like fucking (laughs) rappers dude like he just does and that becomes the new lingo when you talk to young kids they all talk like this, you know what I mean? Like, and their fucking eyes are closed, like the sheesh kind of a talk. They just talk <laughs> like that, dude, and it's so fucking annoying. But that's just how language becomes it, dude. It's you hear it, it enough. They talk that way because they're lit. <laughs> and they're, but, and they're woke and dope. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is like that it's just silly. Like we were talking it about silly. language, it's, and it's so silly. silly. And like the mid Atlantic accent is so is very silly because you know it's all fast talking, high trousers, you know, like that. And they always make fun of it in movies and stuff. But that's just it's how funny. It, yeah, it is. It's very funny. But at the time, that was just like the the regular way things were. And but like the country never really talked like that. That was no. very much a Hollywood thing. It was completely fabricated. It yeah. was yeah, which is awesome to think about that they that Hollywood was just like. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and say people talked like this from uh, 1918 until 1954 when the, when rock and roll hit. Mm, no wonder my dad was born in 54. Because, <laughs> because then it became like, because then in movies, whenever you had badasses, they were always like, hey, kitty cat. You what, know? like Fonzie or something? Well, yeah. I'm saying like when rock and roll hit, but it was all guys from, it was like, it was like, what the people were doing in the South was becoming like the way you talk greasers and all that shit, you know, womanizing and all that jazz. Yeah, it was. I mean, a lot of it, if you look at movies, if you look at, um, so do you, you know, film noir is like considered like very like late thirties to like late forties cinema. Uh, so Val Luton films, shit like that, or like double indemnity. That's like your best example of like film noir. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a, it's a 1940s film about a basically a private detective sort of a person. He's a, like an insurance salesman type of guy, insurance uh, investigator. And uh, 
a woman comes into his office, you know, smoky office. She says, oh, I need help. You know, my husband, he's going to take all of my money. And they end up killing him. Then they're on the run. And, you know, it's all. And then double indemnity. Oh, so it's two stories I've already heard put together. It, but but this was the 1940s before that was done. That set up everything we know today. Whenever you see in a cartoon or a movie that's like making fun of like, oh, it's black and white. You have a saxophone playing in the background. Hmm. There's smoke and a hot woman walks through the door and she's like, I need help. My husband, he's planning to murder me. And the detective's like, I'll help you, honey. You know, like, don't worry, toots. I got this one. (laughs) And then it always ends up that the woman was actually trying to murder her husband. Didn't see that coming. (laughs) Let me touch the buttons. That's the applause button. What do you need to applaud that for? Well, what button? Okay, A is for applause. C is for crash. D is, oh, brother, this guy stinks, right? Yep. Wait, what's B? It's something else. Oh, it's uh. I changed it. Is it boo? What is it? Mm-mm. What it's is something, it? Something I don't remember. It did nothing. Oh yeah, it's the crickets. Okay, so that's the same. Mm-hmm. Like this whole this the whole last uh, twenty seconds. I will call that B for baby crickets. Sure. Um, I just discovered a documentary. That I can't wait to watch. Oh, you haven't watched it yet? No. Okay. But it was done by Eli Roth. I just saw that pop up on my Instagram feed. Finn. Yeah. It's from last year, so how mm-hmm. did it just pop up? No, like on my Instagram feed, because I follow Eli Roth. Oh, okay. And I didn't know that it existed either. So it's about like the shark industry and how bad it is it's fucked up. to like fuck up to like fuck with not just the ocean wildlife, but sharks specifically. The craziest thing that I learned, cause he was on another podcast. That was the whole point of this. I heard him on a podcast plugging. Like I, I think he was plugging shit he's doing now, but he talked about that for like 40 minutes because he's very passionate about saving. Like he not, always has been too. Like, and like say, especially about these sharks, he was saying how, the shark fin industry and just people overfishing sharks and killing them. Like you're fucking with the ecosystem in such a way that like, it's going to, it's, it's going to be really bad because there's, there's algae that grows in some of these ecosystems that can, uh, absorb something like 10 times more carbon than other shit. And like this needs to be this way, and it all stems from the shark. And well, that documentary is called Finn. I want to watch it really bad. Pretty sure most of our oxygen on Earth comes from algae. Yeah, and like, oh, I think the, the ecosystem's like getting fucked up, and it's fucking with the algae, and it's just it's all going away because people are greedy and they're killing sharks because it's profitable and all this shit. Oh yeah, dude. This is a horrible synopsis of it, and I need to actually just watch it. But I I thought that was super interesting because Eli Roth is fucking. Cannibal Holocaust, Hostel, and fucking... Not Cannibal Holocaust. Or, I mean, Green Inferno, sorry. Yeah, but I knew what you meant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, Knock Knock, fucking, obviously, Hostel, Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever, yeah. and, like, silly-ass movies sometimes, right? Um, Not intentionally silly, I mean, but... I think I can name all of his films, because he did one called The House with the Clock in Its Walls, huh. with Jack Black. It was like a, more of like a kid's movie, and he has another movie coming out because, yeah, I follow him on Instagram. I've been an Eli Roth fan since I was a kid, really. Cause... Since, what, 2008, 2007? No, because I saw Cabin Fever way before that, and I loved it. And then I saw Hostel uh, right when it came out. I was super into that, so that was like 06. I was, yeah, definitely, in, I was definitely in school when that came out. Yeah, yeah. Hostel was 2006. So I I found that fascinating. And But you, you got to admit, the Green, uh, the Green Inferno is pretty hilarious. It's pretty silly. Well, it's it's over the top. Yeah, but it, like on purpose. It's it's silly. That's the movie you fainted in. Remember I know that. I yeah, you won't let me forget about it. Of course, I remember. <laughs> that was wild. I, I just did ne- not. I never saw anybody from a movie pass. I mean, I know it was probably because of other shit going on. Yeah. So thanks for bringing it up. You know, <laughs> yeah, funny. But. uh yeah, that scene where they rip the dude's head and limbs off at the same time. That was brutal. It's pretty gross. 
all, all after that, though, was all silly shit. Well, yeah, on purpose silly, though. It's still, on purpose or not, silly is fucking silly. Yeah, but That's all, my all point. of his movies have, like, a like a sort of a humor. I mean, host, hostile. You're missing what I'm saying. This serious documentary about the shark is not industry silly at is all. not silly, and it's by the same guy. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You can't really make it a silly documentary about how sharks are getting fucked. Well, it's on Discovery Plus, and I'll probably do like a free trial just to see it. Because I saw, I thought it was on Amazon, but it's not. But oh, he also said, "Get this." Speaking of uh, X and Pearl that we love. Oh, Ty West, yeah. Uh, he said uh, they were talking about uh, the job of an intimacy coordinator these days in movies. Do you know what they do? I do. You can probably guess. Yeah, I, I've actually listened to interviews with people who have had to use intimacy coordinators before. It's and something. how they make things much worse. Really? Yes. I need to turn my sound off for a second. Can you hit the button? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well. The intimacy coordinator in X, like, like most of X was like, or not most of, but a good portion of X was like about the porno that they were making. Well, yeah. So the intimacy coordinator was like pretty necessary, I guess. But that one was so awesome and good at her job and just a pleasure to be around that Ty West cast her as the mother in Pearl. The old, like, you know, uh. Oh yes. my God! She's the intimacy coordinator. She was the intimacy coordinator Whoa. for X. Oh, she did great. Uh huh. Everybody uh, in that movie was fucking perfect. And how fucking sick was she as the mom in Pearl? Oh, that's what I'm saying. She's incredible. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting little nugget. I I still can't believe you guys didn't stay past the credits. It's not something I'm like. It's not a reflex of mine to stay past, past have you been, credits. Have you been able to find the after credit sequence since on the internet? The one that hints at Maxine? Yes. I I think I saw it on TikTok or something. That's good. But they should be promo- they should promote it by now. It's not coming out until next year. No, I'm saying they should promote that after sequence scene by now. Oh. Like it's cuz cuz Pearl's out of theaters now, right? I don't know. Could be. I think it is. Well, <sighs> You can uh, when when Ty West comes on this podcast, when it, I'm sure eventually he will, being a Wilmingtonite as our as we are, we can t- we can let him know that he should start promoting it. Sooner. Bro, uh, if we could get Ty West on, that's like bucket list shit, huh? Yeah, especially as someone who is from here, it's a pretty sweet ass guest. Yeah. Well, you know what I was thinking? Hmm. We should go to Comic Mania and podcast from inside Comic Mania. Are we allowed to do that? Why not? Why not? Because it's a business and they can tell us not to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying we should ask them and be like, hey, can we do a podcast. Can we podcast from inside your establishment and interview you guys about running a comic book store? How rad would that be? That's a pretty good uh, idea for an episode. Let's, yeah. Let's put a pin in that well, and talk about it off the podcast. <laughs> we can, but it just hit me. So I was like, Makes I got to get that out. Now yeah. it's on record. That's a good ass idea. Yeah. I mean, you can always cut it out if you want. Well, I'll 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 save like like I'll I'll spare you the the stupid shit. I want to get into who we're working with this week. Oh god, I don't. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, please. Don't don't make me twist your arm. Fuck. No. I I was getting very frustrated yesterday with coworkers. I'll this is a, this is what we this is the thing that know, we have I know, to I know. express that. It's just I can't, I don't want to say anything too but the federal technician life is very different from the service industry. People sure. are paid hourly and they're paid pretty well. They don't move like how I move, how I'm used to moving in the service industry. I was trying to get something done and it was re- and I needed an, a second person for it. And it. I'll just say it was really, really difficult for me to just nail down one individual <laughs> to help me because they're for hours. This it should this whole thing I was doing yesterday. This job should have took 
an hour and it took all day because they were doing other things or they're fucking off or because because they get distracted either fucking off fantasy football or or we get pulled to do other things when i'm trying to just do this one thing and it, it and it was it just it they they just don't and that's that's any federal job i mean you, you know any government job dude it's way yep. different than what i'm used to now sometimes that's a good thing because our job can be so stressful mm. because of what we do you have to go slow if you rush something you could up. you could fuck it up and something and that's could bad. die but there are also times when one person is doing a job that multiple people should be on and not a lot of other people are standing around and that drives uh, me insane. That shit makes me fucking crazy. It makes me furious. And I came home yesterday and uh, my wife had a, had a bad day too. So I kind of just let her tell me about her day and, I'll, and I just sort of, I was like, look, I had a real stressful day too. Um, you know, I, I, I just gave her the, the short of it basically. And, uh, that's who I'm working with. Sometimes it's, it's just hard to track people down to focus on one thing. But you never said why were they, were they just fucking off or were they just being, pull- yeah, were people, they being pulled in multiple people, directions? People were bullshitting a whole lot. Yeah. People were bullshitting. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's the bullshitters that you need yeah, and everybody and can't, people like to make fun of me at work too because no kidding. I'm I thank you for that because I am trying to rush around to actually, you know, get stuff done. And everybody's like, "Ah, calm down. Bud. Calm down, bud." They always use bud. And it's like funny. They're like, "That's just not how things work around here." That's not how bud. things work around here. And I'm like, and I'm like, "But in the morning meeting, they make it seem like this and this and this are priorities. They're like, yeah, they always do that, but it's not really, you know, it's not this. And, it's not, and I'm like, I don't understand. Why would they say something and then mean something else? <laughs> One day, those lazy people are going to break your spirit. The, the Well, that's what they always say. They're like, oh, we'll break you. <laughs> and One it's going to be great. We'll break you. We'll break you. <laughs> and what bothers me the most is they're all very good at their job. Of they're, course they're they are. super smart. And and I'm not <laughs> either of those things. Maybe you think you're not, but I'm sure your they, skills. They're always are, like, "No, nah, we just been doing it longer." I'm, I'm sure your skills are very valuable. No, they and, are. No, my, then, school, my skills. My skills are valuable. Don't call yourself. Dumb. Don't talk about my friend like that. No, but what I mean, what I mean by that is, like what I said is, like to me, transmissions are magical dragons. Uh-huh. And <laughs> where's the wizard? <laughs> and to yeah, exactly. And <laughs> to them, they're like. Pfft, you know, of course, it's uh, an engine. It it does this. It sucks. Fuck it. It, it fucking sucks. Bang. Uh huh. Wait. Fuck. Combustion. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm trying to remember the way. Su- uh. You suck. They talk about that stuff the same way that you would talk about music if they asked right, you a stupid I, exactly. question too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the language they speak. That's no, no, their no, no. world. It's not like that's. It's more of like a silly thing. That's suck, why they're laid suck, back bang, like blow. that too. Yeah. Suck, bang, blow, push. Doesn't Something matter. like that. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Let it go. It doesn't. Yeah. That's their thing. Right, 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 right. Apparently. Like a, I know, obviously. but I need it to be, you know, eventually it has to be my thing. Well. I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I'm, do, I'm doing good work. I'm sure you're yeah. a damn Boy Scout and they love you there. I uh, yeah, I'm very much a goody two-shoes, yes. Good. But they're always like, oh, we'll break you. And I was like, dude, the, everyone has said that to me will. my entire life and I have remained the exact same person well I'm uptight and i'm a workaholic well either they will break you yeah. someday nobody will. 15 years down the road who knows Maybe. or or you'll get promoted or moved up to do something else because you work that way mm. Un- might be unlikely but it's yeah <laughs> un- unlikely improbable you would but think not that's how the army works improbable <laughs> not impossible that's true all right uh, who are you working with I, I'll keep, I'll just keep it brief. Petty people. Yeah. I don't fucking like petty people. <laughs> oh, oh really? No. <laughs> Not one bit. All right. <laughs> like, if there's something that, like, you should appreciate this, of all people. If there's something that can be done, 
And somebody like me, who I'm not scatterbrained by any means, but my memory is not always great. Right. Clearly. (laughs) Yeah. But like, for example, in the finance department, one of my functions in a day is to post the payments that we get on a daily basis, electronic ones, paper checks and credit cards and all that good stuff. I have to post that to the various bills, close them out. Blah, the, the day is over. This is how much money we made this day. So one of the functions is depositing checks. So I physically have to take them to the deposit machine, run them through the machine, uh, tally the shit up on the m and website, and then you fold it up. There and checks always come with that like piece that you can detach yeah. that has the details of what it is. Yeah. We call that a remittance. Okay. The remittances go with a screenshot that's printed out of the total, and then the checks get wrapped up in another piece of paper and all gets wrapped up together, put away in the files. So the other day, I forgot, like I wrapped the checks up, but I forgot to put them in the drawer. Okay. These checks have already been deposited. They're stamped. Like, te- like technically, you should not be leaving literally money sitting out somewhere. Yeah. But they've already been processed. They can't be deposited a second time. If you, like, like in the old days, like, somebody could, in theory, change the payable name to their sem- them themselves and take it to their bank and deposit it in their account or something. But that's what the stamp is for. That's what all this other all these measures are for. Anyway, I forgot them out on the table, uh, right by where the deposit machine is. So, rather than just putting them in the drawer and just moving on, one of my coworkers, who is notoriously all, petty, huh? Notoriously petty. I, apparently, can be. De- definitely petty in the email game, so it doesn't shock me at all. Uh, they took the checks and put them on my chair for me to find. No fucking way. For me to find the next day. Damn. It was more steps uh, uh, down the aisle to my chair than it would be to just reach down and put them in the drawer and shut the file cabinet. What's their excuse? That's not my. There is no excuse. There was also no, there was no note or message or, or anything. The the checks were f- left on my chair for me to find. Do you so you don't think they were like oh I don't know what to do with these these are this is Tom's job. I know for a fact they're not because this person w- uh, at one point or another it was the department coordinator. Wow. So they know exactly where they go. And you know exactly who did it. I sure do because <sighs> only one person aside <laughs> aside from our boss stays later than like five six o'clock. Jeez. This one coworker comes in around nine and sometimes will not leave till seven, eight, eight thirty. And we're not we're not hourly. We're paid on a fixed rate. Right. So <laughs> you can you can totally work more than your forty hours if you want to, but there's no fucking point. That's nuts. They either work so slow that they can't get all the things done in eight hours, or they are so married to the fact that they're at work. Like we said about previous generations sure, taking yeah. pride in what they do. Wait, so can you take a lunch break anytime you want? I sure can. Okay. That's awesome. Plus, 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 my boss, who is a notorious workaholic, sometimes she'll work 70-hour weeks all the time because she's just a psychopath about getting shit done. She is very flexible with stuff, and she'll be like, whatever you need to do, just go do it. Like, today, I came in... Like obviously, I come in before any everybody anyway, but I was twenty minutes late because I took my mom to the airport before work. Yeah, she doesn't give a fuck. But as long as you get your work done, exactly, wow. she doesn't care. So this this person could easily just fucking like I'm just saying, you could just put it in the drawer, just move on. And if anything, that's a teachable moment. The next day, you can be like, hey, by the way, like you left the checks out again or something, like. Just watch that. That is way more effective to me as a moment and a conversation than just leaving them on my chair for me to find. So you'd rather somebody confront you and say, hey, I found these checks yesterday. I just don't do that again. That's a teachable moment. In fact, my boss calls that a uh, training opportunity. 
See, that's funny. I would rather them leave the checks on my on my seat. No, 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 no. Oh my I, God. Neither because I get I get mad when people are like, "Hey, I found these checks. Why don't Wh don't do that again? Why do you get mad? I get mad because. Do you get mad at yourself? Uh, yeah, I get okay. mad at myself. I also get mad at them because I go, oh, I, in my head I'm thinking, oh, you haven't left fucking checks out before. We've all left that. fucking checks out before, and you're gonna lecture me on this shit. I thought Fuck this you was very much. I, I I apologize for my little tantrum. I thought this was going somewhere else. Yeah, talk about petty people. Am I right, <laughs> ladies? The pot calling the kettle black. Anyway. People make that joke at my work all the time. It's not a joke. It's a it's a euphemism. Well, they always go, "Hi, kettle. I'm pot." That is lame. Yeah, and they should be shot. Actually, it's it's funny the way they do it. Doesn't sound very funny. It's kind of funny. Okay, it's probably my, a situation. My work is a very um. Sounds just downright silly. My work is a very like I'm sure everybody could say like, "Oh, we talk a lot of shit at my work." Every sentence at my work that is spoken between two people is a offensive <laughs> shit talking moment. You have to be on top of your game at six in the fucking morning at my job. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's it, it made me, I mean, I've always been good at comebacks, but it made me have to do them all the time every day. It's also, I'm just like, I get fucking so annoyed too because I'm like, I've really got to make a joke about how this fucking guy, this guy made fun of my nose and now I have to go make fun of him because he's balding like, I, like all the time. <laughs> like huh. your nose may be your nose, but at least you still have your hair. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. I always, yeah. Would you rather have a big nose or- Big nose. Don't even finish the sentence. Yeah, okay. Then go bald, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, no doubt in my mind. Really? I would much rather have a big nose. I mean, me too. Well, I have a big nose, but well, I have my hair. In hindsight, now that I know what I look like bald, it's not the worst thing in the world. No, you look good bald, but, but you're also not balding. I'm not. You I don't want to be bald. Shaved your head. I don't want to yeah. be balding. Shaved your head. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Thank God for my dad's jeans. I'm. I don't. Yeah, think you I'm guys gonna... have great hair. Yeah. You know what? This has been a really good ass episode. Let's wrap it up. Sure. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram. Oh my God, we didn't fucking plug anything. <laughs> at thanks for your services <laughs> underscore podcast and that's where you will find all of our social media outings such as tiktok youtube, YouTube full episodes on youtube if you're just listening links you to can watch. any any pod catchers that you have you know spotify itunes stitcher stitcher google yeah. play yeah google play that's right i just learned i can get on iheart radio i don't know anyone who's ever used it but it's an option. Well, I it's mean, in they, the bio. They had like a huge festival like seven years ago where Billy Joe had that freak out, the guy from Green Day. It was an iHeartRadio festival. So people, I guess, are listening. I feel like people in the Midwest listen. Do you know what iHeartRadio actually is? It's like a it's internet clear channel. radio. It's Clear Channel. Oh, it's Clear Channel? Clear uh, Channel acquired iHeartRadio and then they rebranded as iHeartRadio. They own everything. Bro. That's right. Yeah, Clear Channel's kind of jakes. So anyway, <laughs> and find if you're us not, on Instagram at thanks for your services underscore podcast. And if you're not really a social media person and you just want to email us in some stories or comments or reviews, even if you hate us, even if you love us, that is thank you for your services at gmail.com. You're spelled the letters you are. So thank you for you are services at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. The last story we got was pretty awesome. I liked reading it and. I would like some more. So send in uh yeah, we've send only in had your things. Two emails in That's right. Almost that, a that, year. That makes so. two. <laughs> hey, the time the time is fucking irrelevant, but the emails are welcome. Thank you for your services at gmail.com. I feel bad. I was a little complainy this episode. I, I am in a bad mood. I, I need I need rest. I was you need a, rest. It was a stressful week and uh for all you other folks out there that are also having a stressful week, like it's it's Halloween time well you know by the time this comes out it'll be a little bit past halloween but whatever it's halloween i wish we a, could yeah this is a time when the veil is thin and yeah it's a time of harvest that and is, whatever that your beliefs fact. are like dude it's God. the veil is thin that is a great point i almost forgot about that the veil is thin between our worlds and the other our world and the other world and right now and just just enjoy that you get to live in a fucking rad universe where we have halloween yeah 
Honestly. And I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, things are about to get real fucking shitty because it's the holidays mm. in the U.S. And uh, the, re- <laughs> the rest of the country is just going to start fucking sucking balls. So, well... Let's wrap. The, let uh, I'll 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 end on a nice uh, little nugget for those Delawareans of, of us listening, and for you even. Thanks. The Wegmans is open. <laughs> so that's yep. a, that's a bright little light. The, the Wegmans on one forty one is officially open. It as, is as of the other day. And I will yet? no. I I I'm will going. go though. I'm sure they're out of everything right now because everyone fucking's been freaking out and going there probably. Uh. I've yet to go to a Wegmans that was out of anything. <laughs> That's true. So, anyway, thanks uh, for listening, y'all, and thanks this for is... your uh, services. And sure, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>